Now, one of the reasons the FAA requires you to take a knowledge test to be a remote pilot is to make sure that you're aware of your responsibilities as a remote pilot. So, let's go for it. First of all, in order to be the remote PIC for Part 107 operations, you must have a current remote pilot certificate issued by the FAA. In fact, that's why you and I are working together right now. And you need to know that as a remote PIC, you're responsible for all aspects of the operation. So as a remote PIC, you must ensure that your operation complies with all the applicable regulations. And you must be able to direct the SUAS to ensure compliance with all the applicable provisions. So you have to be aware of all of the factors that could affect your flight and ensure that in the event of loss of control, the aircraft will pose no undue hazard to other people, aircraft, or property. Now, as you know, one of your options as a remote PIC is that you can have another person manipulating the controls. Now, the surprising thing is that the person manipulating the controls does not have to have a remote pilot certificate. For instance, you could be using someone who has a better understanding of the specific drone you're using, or maybe they have a better understanding of the objectives of the flight. They could even have a certificate, but maybe they're not currently regarding the Part 107 testing and training requirements, or they could be someone in training to get a remote pilot certificate. But they can only operate the SUAS if they are directly supervised by a certificated remote pilot acting as PIC. And that PIC must be able to immediately gain control of the SUAS to prevent a hazardous situation or an accident or an incident. Now, one way to regain control is to use automation to put the aircraft in a pre-programmed safe mode, such as a hover, holding pattern, or return home. Or you could simply stay close enough to the person manipulating the controls to be able to physically take over the control station. Or you could use a buddy box system with two control stations so you can override the person manipulating the controls. Now, one of the wonderful things about drones is you can pre-program a lot of moves to be executed later under automation. Now, when you're using automation, you as the remote PIC must retain the ability to avoid hazards and give way to other aircraft and in general stay in compliance with part 107. So even when you're using automation you still have to have the ability to direct the aircraft through commands using either automation or manual manipulation of the controls. So you've got to be able to do things like changing the route or altitude or commanding the aircraft to land immediately. Now, as a remote PIC, one of your options is to use one or more visual observers, sometimes referred to as a VO. Now, a VO's sole task is watching the drone to report hazards to the rest of the crew. If you do use one or more visual observers, you must assure that all of them are in a location where they can maintain visual line of sight and have a way to effectively communicate to all the other crew members the aircraft's location as well as the location of all other aircraft and obstacles. A VO can provide extra situational awareness and they can fulfill the visual line of sight responsibilities and allow the remote PIC and person manipulating the controls to take care of other operational duties such as checking display but the remote PIC and person manipulating the controls must still stay within line of sight of the aircraft. Now, all crew members involved in an SUAS operation must coordinate to scan the airspace for any potential collision hazard and maintaining awareness of the position of the aircraft through direct visual observation. Now, the FAA wants you to know about a technique you could use when you're looking for other aircraft. You might think you can just sweep the sky and look for other aircraft, but the FAA thinks it works much better if you just do 10 degree sector scans. So they suggest you move your gaze by 10 degrees, stop and focus, and then move it another 10 degrees. And that way they think you'll have a better job of seeing things as you're scanning. Finally, one other responsibility of all crew members 
involved is to evaluate your own medical condition. SUAS crew members are not required to get an airman's medical certificate, but they are responsible to take themselves out of operation if they know or suspect they have a physical or mental condition that could interfere with safe operation.